Welcome everyone. Um, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak here at this wonderful location. Um, today I would like to present um, two uh, completely different topics, but they both show um, how we can use next generation sequencing um, to, to get more insight in uh, human disease. So the first is uh, the, the detection of the NOVA mutations. So uh, we set out to solve um, the human syndrome, the Kanto syndrome. Um, this is characterized by uh, hypertrichosis and uh, bone and cartilage uh, uh, dysplasia, and also so several uh, cardiac manifestations. Thus far, uh, only 50 cases have been described wor worldwide. Um, and from these reports, uh, we have the impression, we had the impression that this is an autosomal dominant uh, disease disorder. <clears throat> so, uh, as you all know, uh, the, the, the problem with uh, detection of variants is, is not to, to find them, but to find the causal one. Um, we solve this uh, using a trio-based approach. So, we sequence um, both parents and the child, and then uh, compare all the variants found in the child to those in the parents, uh, to just be left with the de novo mutations, so the, the mutations which are unique to the child. So we set up, uh, set off with such an approach using, um, this was still on the Solid 4 platform, uh, using a whole exome enrichment. Uh, so we got around 9,000 variants, uh, called at least in a single sample. And after sampling, uh, after filtering, we could reduce this to uh, approximately one third. So then we applied the de novo filter, so looking at variants only present in the child. Um, and we were left with five uh, candidate variants. Those we tried to confirm by Sanger sequencing. Um, and uh, we could confirm only a single one. Uh, and this single one turned out to be a D mutation. So this single mutation is a missense mutation in the ABCC9 gene. So um, this gene is an ATP-dependent uh, potassium channel, uh, and the effect of the, of the amino acid change is predicted to be damaging by all uh, prediction programs. Next, of course, is the question, um, is this uh, de novo mutation specific for Cantu syndrome? So we collected samples from all over the world. So uh, in the end, we had in total uh, DNA material from 16 Cantu patients. Um, and from these, we could confirm in 14 a mutation, a missense mutation in ABCC9. Um, for all the cases where we had um, paternal and maternal DNA, uh, we could confirm that those cases had occurred de novo, um, except for a single case, uh, which is marked with a star. Um, where we had an affected child uh, and an affected mother, so the, the, the disease-causing mutation was uh, transmitted. So then um, we went into the biology of this uh, ABCC9 gene. So ABCC9 is part of a, a sodium, uh, of a potassium channel. Um, so you can see it uh, like this. You have uh, the, the potassium channel. It's in the outer cell membrane. Um, and it, the, the ABCC9 subunits detect the ATP levels inside the cell, uh, and depending on those ATP levels, the channel uh, is open or closed. So at a low DNA or at low ATP concentration, uh, the channel is open. At high ATP concentration, the channel is closed. So we continued to do uh, patch clamp measurements. So uh, by expressing uh, wild type and mutant uh, ABCC9 protein in um, uh, human cells, um, and then we could measure the current of, of the potassium ions across uh, the channel. And that's what you see here. So um, if you look um, at uh, the, the remaining current, um, which is 100%, that, then that represents the channel is open, and zero means it, the channel is closed. Um, so what we can do then is not only measure the, the current of the, of the potassium ions, but also measure, also play around with the ATP concentrations. So what we see is when we increase the ATP concentrations, um, the channel closes. And if you look at the solid line in, in these graphs, that is the, the line for the wild type uh, channels. And the dashed lines is for three of the mutated channels. 
Uh, and as you can see, those channels close at a higher ATP concentration. And note that the uh, x-axis is logarithmic, so there's really a huge difference in uh, ATP concentration when uh, the channel responds. So um, we wondered whether um, those mutations in ABCC9, which apparently activate the potassium channel and then result in uh, the phenotypes that I uh, described to you, so the, the hypertrichosis, excess of hair, and the cardiac and the vascular phenotypes, whether we could um, help those patients uh, by block this channel, so by blocking the activated channel. Uh, because, well, for, for us, lucky enough, um, already channel blocking drugs were available on the market. Um, so we are now conducting tests to see whether a topical application of these blockers um, relieves the patients from uh, hypertrichosis. So this is a, a nice example, I think, of, of how next generation sequencing can work uh, to, to find new uh, or to, to get more insight in human biology uh, and to, to help uh, patients with Cantu syndrome. Um, and we are applying this approach uh, for more syndromes which we expect to, to have a de novo inheritance. Uh, and we were uh, lucky to, uh, to be better testing the wildfire technology from live technologies. Um, and I want to share some of our experiences. So first, the people in the lab were, were happy because there was less uh, lab work involved because no more emulsion, PCR had, emulsion PCRs had to be done. Uh, and we see a large increase of throughput. So uh, we now get 700 million reads per lane. But also what we see is um, we see more noise in the data, so more low quality uh, reads. Uh, and this is as expected because the software filters are not yet implemented um, and we expect or hope that, that this uh, will improve uh, when we're getting closer to the official release date. Uh, and also, we had noticed before in our exome sequencing data um, that if we start off with lower quality DNA, uh, sometimes we get clonal amplification uh, of molecules um, and this problem seems to be uh, not present while using wildfire um, because we think those clonal amplifications arise during the uh, EPCR step, uh, which we don't need anymore for a wildfire. Also, we, we have the idea that uh, the coverage is more even using wildfire when compared to uh, solid 5500, um, probably also due to EPCR issues. So now I want to go to the second part of my talk, which is something completely different. Um, so we have been doing some tests on uh, the rapid non-invasive detection of fetal trisomies. Um, so um, a very small percentage of all pregnancies um, is, uh, can, or the, of the fetus can have a, a trisomy of a single uh, chromosome. And um, it's very beneficial for the family uh, to, to know this uh, as early as possible. Um, and current technologies require uh, invasive, uh, an invasive procedure, uh, which comes with a small percentage of uh, miscarriages again. Um, however, 100 years ago, or uh, 20 years ago, it was discovered that um, part of the blood of the mother carries cell-free fetal DNA from the child, um, and we can sequence this, uh, and which would allow non-invasive detection of fetal trisomies. Um, so this sounds easy, but it's, it's quite a challenge because um, the fraction of fetal DNA is only 5% in the blood, or it ranges with the week of gestation. It increases uh, up to 20% sometimes. Um, but we have, uh, let's say, 95% of maternal DNA and 5% of fetal DNA. And now we want to um, we want to measure this increase. So what we do is uh, low, uh, whole genome sequencing at a very low coverage. Um, and this was um, originally shown by the lab of Dennis Lowe in Hong Kong uh, on an Illumina platform uh, and later also on uh, solid uh, 5500 platforms. Um, that it's possible to do it this way, but we wondered um, since the run times of uh, solid 5500 are long and that would mean that the the patients have to wait even longer for their uh, 
or they have to wait longer for their diagnosis um, b than the current invasive uh, technologies uh, require, which we would be a reduction of, uh, uh, of quality of, of, of their uh, hospital visit. So we wondered whether we could do it uh, using the Ion Torrent platform, which uh, can allow uh, sequencing and analysis in uh, two days. So we prepared sequencing libraries of uh, the plasma fraction of DNA, uh, both for solid and ion torrent. We uh, tested plasma DNA from five uh, healthy pregnancies. Um, and as you can see, the, the chromosomal representation, so the, the number of reads or the fraction of reads per chromosome uh, looks very similar per platform. So here you see uh, the, the Z scores. Um, which is a measure of the, the variation from the mean. Um, and you can see that all the z-scores, both on solid and ion torrent platforms, um, are, with, are lower than three. And um, as the group of Dennis Lowe set a standard that a z-score of three uh, would be uh, a good or a positive uh, uh, call for a trisomy. So next, we also run a trisomy sample. Uh, and from the panel on the left, I don't have to tell you which one was the, the trisomy sample and which one was the, the, the healthy uh, pregnancy. Um, and on the panel on the right, you can see uh, results from the z-score of chromosome 21 from six more uh, trisomy 21 pregnancies. Uh, and you can see that five of those are clearly uh, over uh, the z-score of three. And one single one remains low, but we also have problems with trisomy detection of this uh, sample on the solid. So um, we believe this is due to poor sampling, uh, sample handling, but we are sorting this out in the future. So um, with this, I come to my conclusions. So in the first part of my talk, I showed you that ABCC9 is mutated in Cantor syndrome, um, and this is an example of how we can use TRIO-based uh, analysis uh, to detect de novo mutations which uh, can cause disease. Um, and in the second part of my talk, I, I showed you that, that we can do trisomy 21 detection on the ion torrent. Um, and currently, we're testing more samples. Um, but we think that in the future, we, uh, the ion torrent would allow uh, rapid non-invasive prenatal analysis. Um, I don't have time to uh, thank all the, the people one by one, but uh, of course this was uh, uh, the result of many people, and uh, the projects were the result of many people. So um, the first uh, set of people is uh, people within our hospital who collaborated on the Cantu syndrome project. The middle part is uh, external collaborators on the Cantu project, and the bottom part you see collaborators on the non-invasive prenatal analysis. I thank you for your attention.